talking about aging in place since 2011. That right? People say, well, what made you start? The baby boomers that are born in 1946 to 1964, the first baby boomers born in 1946 thought of turning 65 in 2011. So well, the whole thing about aging in place, which I'm teaching, if you like where you live and it doesn't work for you, what can you do to kind of change it? And as someone like me, I can't, it's hard to tell everything in an hour, but you get an idea, there are opportunities, there are choices. This is not each side of the class yet, <laughs> I'm just babbling. <laughs> so, so I read this whole thing with aging in place, and I've been talking about it for years, international builder show, I'm all of my, I actually do work in Ireland, I'm doing stuff, people are like, what? Ah, yeah, now I grab them, you know how it is, right? Well, I've seen a weevil, you know weevil. So they had this whole thing, and then all of a sudden, the certain general last year comes out with a whole big posting that loneliness, uh, as we age, people stay by themselves, it's loneliness, it causes all this kind of diseases, all these diseases, loneliness. Alzheimer's, dementia, heart diseases, uh, everything you think of from low and all of a sudden this whole country woke up, right? Well, people that can't stay by themselves, they need to start aging in place more properly and all of a sudden these three words right here became hotter than TikTok. <laughs> it was just nuts. So the idea of what you guys want to do with aging in place is, 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 it's not the end all be all, it's always good to have information. Whether it's for you, maybe, maybe you just, I love information that has nothing to do with me. As no, I just like it because you never know, you may meet somebody and they can tell you something, right? Or may end up being for yourself later on, so what the heck. So, okay, I think we're going to start. Are you, are you filming already? Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So, welcome back. I'm with you of already here. Some people may walk in, and as they walk in, of course, they just stop and stop talking to them. But, Aging in place is a phenomenal topic that, like I just briefly said to you, is coming to play in a lot of ways. People are starting to realize, instead of telling people, hey, you're this age, or maybe you live alone, or maybe you, your, your spouse and you, the house is too big, it's empty, you need to downsize, go to these communities. You want to come in? Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> so, go to the communities. So if you want to go to the communities, everybody's going to be telling you where you can go, right? But a bigger part of that, if you want to go to assisted living, independent living, CCRCs, or anything else out there which is retiring communities, you know of it through a magazine, or someone's telling you quickly, or something you read, but do you know the depth of that? And that is my next class next month with a specialist. That's where you want to go. If you want to go, should be here talking about all the communities and stuff like that. But here we are today, it's aging in place. You like where you are, you want to be where you are, you're going to try to remain where you are, but how are you supposed to know how to do that safely if nobody really talks about it? So I'm here today to talk about as much as I can in an hour. <laughs> I have 40 years of knowledge, so not much is going to dribble out of that. <laughs> but I will say, all right, here we go. So I'm talking here about the five-legged table, and the main areas to take into consideration when planning to age in place, that's what we're going to go through today. This is our focus. We're going to have some questions. I'm going to give my best answers. And where can we go from here? So I encourage you, if I ask questions, to respond to me. But I may not be asking a question that you're thinking. So just come out and let's have a conversation. Because one class, I started a question. I answered within the first five minutes. And we spent 42 minutes talking about, I didn't go through the slides. I don't know nothing. <laughs> so it's important. Right? Because I, I would love to talk about anything. So here's the whole thing with aging in place, and I call it my five-legged table for this reason. Like I was saying earlier, some people say, well, if you have a really good home design, make it easier, like take out the steps, or try to put your master bedroom on the first floor. You can age in place. Age in place simply means age, us people, in place means home. <coughs> so how do we keep people at home for as long as possible. So aging in place. That's what aging in place means. How do you keep it home? Is it fair to say you change your home design to make it easier to live in? You'll have a great aging in place experience. If I just had home design, what about the rest? So this is what I say. Five-legged table, just picture five legs on the table. We have healthcare. We have transportation. <coughs> We have proper house design. We have community and financial. 
I have been talking about these five categories to make a very fair, safe, aging in place environment. If you don't have one, okay, we have a five-legged table. If we don't have one, let me see if I go back for a second. If I'm missing one of these legs, say I'm missing the transportation part, can I still sit at this table? Will the table still function if I needed to use it? Okay. Say I don't have transportation, now I don't have community. Now there's two legs missing. If I have three legs missing, so you get the point that as time goes on, you're not, something's not gonna, something's gonna be off if you have any one of these components missing. Okay? Now when I say any one of these components, people are like, oh, there's this, you're forgetting about this. There's a lot of things that make your at-home experience for your aging place just for you. You know what you need. But overall, in the whole community, of national speakers and all types of speakers on aging in place from the government sites, there has to be some kind of group to start talking about. And this is basically the five topics we start talking about at first. So when we talk about healthcare, we talk about transportation. If you think about it, if you want to stay at home, you would like the home design to be easy for you to live in. If you have stuff way up there and you have to get a ladder to climb up, to get something out of your kitchen, it's doable, but is it safe, right? Think about that. Or if you're in your house and you have a doctor's appointment, you don't drive anymore, uh, Uber's not available, there's no one, well, I guess you're not going to the doctor. And if there's no one to take you to the doctor, that can lead to healthcare problems. Okay, see, there's something always ping-pongs over something else. If you don't have the financials, what that simply means, that I'm not talking about millionaires, <laughs> we're talking about people that can pay staying at home, whether you have taxes or a mortgage or whatever it is, whatever finances, cooking, expenses, electricity, all the utilities, if you have the finances to stay at home and to live your life comfortably the way you want, that's very good as well. So let's just go on to my next, I have a little cheat sheet here what's coming up. So let's start with transportation. So transportation, you say, I have value, I get it as a car, I'm good. <laughs> a lot of people don't have the car, right? So, and a lot of people, so we have accessibility and availability. How do you get transportation that's accessible and available? So I can see everyone in this room does not have the need for accessibility transportation because those are people with wheelchairs or walkers or prosthetic legs or arm, whatever, prosthetics. There's a certain type of transportation to accompany their ability. Hmm? So then affordability, the safety features in transportation, the technology, the driver assistance programs. So transportation is not just getting in your car going or calling for a taxi and going. For a lot of people it is. For a majority of people that want to age in place, this has to have to have a special cab or someone that knows how to transport them. If you're in a wheelchair and you're by yourself and you don't have a caregiver, think about a second. You have to get in the wheelchair. Sorry, I'm going to chair. You gotta sit in your wheelchair. The transportation comes out, say it's one of those vans or, or whatever. They open the door and they'll do whatever they have to do with you. But how are you gonna get from here to there? They will not touch you because that is an insurance, that is a, a possible uh, soon to be litigation, a liability. Right? So how do you do this? I mean, if you don't have a caregiver, how do you so people realize that is an issue, that is a problem. So they end up staying at home. They don't have the transportation site. My answer to that is there are companies that can help. There are a lot of ways to get transportation if you are not capable of doing it yourself. People are like, where, Valerie, where? Yeah, who heard of Uber? Ooh, Uber. <laughs> Uber and Lyft. You ever heard of Uber? It's like a car service, or Lyft, it's a car service. Just get on your phone, you put your address, and someone shows up and takes you where you gotta go. I don't really recommend it, but there's something, and people I talk to are afraid for car service. The aging population, as we age, what happens? We get a little more, I don't know, I don't know if I trust. <laughs> I don't know what happens, but that's what happens as we age, right? But there's a company called Go Go Grandparents, to say. So you just call a number, you actually pick up, you speak to a human being, they say, where are you, where you want to go, and they have someone come and get you, right, for a fee. Who comes and gets you? Uber. 
So if you're, and how they get paid is they charge you 20 cents a mile. So if you go, you know, so the fact that you call somebody and you talk, you feel more secure. If I work and you trust these people, they have their, their license, they're bonded. They call the Uber and say, you're, you're traveling 10 miles away. So you pay Uber their prop, say their fee is $20 for the 10 miles. The 10 miles are going to add on 20 cents a mile, which is what, $2, right? So you pay extra $2 by using go 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 um, grandparent. See, but there's a lot of people, because we know as we age, we start changing, the way we feel changes, the way we decide changes, who we want to be around change. We just change, it's life. So when it gets to transportation on your own, or with the spouse, but you don't want to drive yourself, what are the opportunities? What are out there? There are a lot of places out there. Again, I can stay here all day and spend 20 minutes on this alone, but know that you can ask somebody about transportation if you feel that you can't do it yourself. There's a lot of affordability. There's a lot of affordability transportation here. Yeah, I have a question about the transportation. So you call Google grandparents, they call the Uber, mm -hmm. but when you get into Uber, are you paying? It's no, no, so when you pay, everything's from PayPal or credit card. But it's Google parents is paying for it. But you're paying a little extra because you use Google grandparents. Okay. That's right? So that's kind of what it is. And you don't have to but take out money and feel that someone's going to well, eat Well, I take Uber, but mm -hmm. they have my credit card now. Right. So, so Google grandparents have it. So if I start not trusting, like you said, because we do do that, yeah. if I go through Google grandparents, I trust them. And so they will do all the paying and everything. They're the ones that have the credit card. And you're actually talking to me. Yes. Which is okay. the same side. He was paying a little extra. But there's, there are other companies like that. Don't go right is one of them. There's other companies like that. Some people are seeing it, they seen transport or something like that. There's a few of them out there like that. So that's the idea of it. It's just they kind of control it for you. You don't want to keep giving your credit card each time and giving the cash. It just takes that anxiety away. So the safety features, technology, direct driver assistance, all this according to the ability that you have and the assistance you need is available. You just have to find it. Um, I'll give you my number at the end. If anybody needs assistance in any of that, you can just find it on the internet. It's not hard to find out. I'll be more than happy. So that's what transportation. It's important. If you didn't have this, how are you going to get where you're going to want to go? Even if it's just shopping, or even if it's for a doctor's appointment, even if it's just to see somebody, you need to get out. How is that going to happen? When we feel we don't have that choice, we feel there is nobody to help me because maybe we're, I know this woman, God love her, she's a, she's a crackerjack, but she's in a wheelchair and she's got this attitude like, the world stinks, but I'm lovely. Or something, I can't explain it, but she's funny. But she needs to go out. She needs to go places. She won't call anyone. I don't trust them. I don't do this. They may drop me in a wheelchair. They have to leave me on my head. All this stuff, right? Drop you on your head in a wheelchair. What is wrong with me? I'm telling you. So, but this is what she creates a story. So I got her involved. I really sat down with her a lot. And now she found a particular company. She found true drivers in the company she likes. And now she has. Now she's getting out for the first time in years. So I don't want to get too hung up on transportation, but you get that idea. It is important if you want to stay at home and you want to have your days at home. I know it sounds silly now, but it's really not. Healthcare. Here comes fun. So when I say healthcare, we need healthcare in our lives. People are like, I have Medicare, I'm good. Okay. Well, that's really good. You have Medicare. It's wonderful. I'm just supplements and the part D and part everything else that makes it nuts right now. But there's more than having just Medicare thing and um, paying someone to pay my doctor bill or my hospital bill. There's more than that. So what happens if you stay at home and you're aging at home or aging in place and you're somebody that, I don't know, maybe. You hurt your ankle and you had to have an ankle replacement. I'm making this up. But you're at home and it's hard for you to, to navigate around your house. So who's going to come in and help you? Friends, yes. Family, yes. If we have them. But like most women, <laughs> we don't ask. <laughs> we don't ask for help. I don't know why, but it's kind of that way. So there's places like home care people that come to you. Have anybody hear of a company like Home Health Services? You know what Home Health Services are? Okay. So a home, let's say a home care company home care company. They have certified people all the way from nurses all the way down to CNAs, which are nurses assistants. And, and they come into your house, they come to your home, and they care. 
So maybe you need someone to help you get up and dress. And maybe you need someone to stay with you five or six hours a day, four days a week, or all week long. You pick the times, the days, and the level of care you need. And there are professionals that come in. There are home care companies here in the US that I really like, and also the same company that now international. Because the aging of America, I'm so you heard this already, but the aging of America is, okay? Over 10,000 people, in the U.S. turned 65 a day, and this has been happening since 2011. The U.S. population, by the year 2034, will have more people over the age of 65 than under the age of 18, for the first time in the country's history. So we're aging, but the new kids aren't being born, right? So think about all this population. Years ago, for every person that needed help at home from a home care service, every person needed help at home, had eight to 10 people that could help them, whether it be family, whether it be friends or services, eight to 10 people that helped them back years ago. Today, in 2024, there's about, uh, I'll give you four. Four people to every one person that needs help, because there's more aging population than there is younger population that's, that has a job of helping other people. So if we want to start thinking, all right, if I want to age in a place, who, we already talked about transportation, so you can get things done, shopping and everything else. Now we're talking about your health care. So if you need, just know, here I am here to tell you that there, don't be afraid to stay to age at home. Just don't, because if something happens to me, what's going to happen? If I need someone to care for me, who's going to do it? There are companies that do it. Now, home care services are not covered by insurance unless you have long-term care insurance. LTC insurance, but it's private pay for the most part, for the most part. And they, it brings such security to your mind, knowing that if anything happened, Valerie said, there's this that can come in to help me, and that's really good news. They're called home care agencies. Then you can look at home health services. Now, home health services, home health services here. Home care companies is like a string off of that. Then we also have physical therapists, occupational therapists, right? Anybody in home health that provides you with a service for your health can come to your house. No, you think you have to go out. People do come to your house. There are people that they'll come in just to stay with you a few hours a day to keep you company, or cook for you, or clean for you, or help you get dressed, help you do whatever your needs are. There are services there to help you. Integrated care coordination. That's. So we have now this professionals called care managers. They're, they have a business and their business is care management. So you say if I had a care management business, you'd call me and say, Valerie, I get a lot, I do get these calls, but I get them from adult children that take care of their parents. My mom, she needs someone to help her with her medications to, to, to get there and make, give a plan and help my mom pay her bills. She needs help with this, she needs help with that. She needs someone to manage even for yourself. These people will come and help you organize. They don't feel stressed. They just come in and help you organize. You have them for as long as you want, or you just need them for a week or whatever it is. There's a lot of that out there. The organization at home, staying at home is so important. You know how important you know what happens when you live in chaos? What happens when you live in chaos? Right? Like more. we start losing our motivation, our mojo to do things because it's so chaotic. We don't know where to start anymore, then our world starts closing in. And we sit on the couch, and that's where we live, and the world goes on around us. Preventative care, wellness programs, medication management, this is all things we need. So in healthcare, who's managing your medicine? Are you, are you taking it properly? How many people don't take it? Because again, there's no, there's no coordination of anything in your life as far as health. You need someone to help you. There are people out there, professional people, that come in to help you. Care management, home care services, all of that. They'll come in and help you through all of it. Now the first one, I left that last, telemedicine. Anybody, anybody in this room uh, have telemedicine, telecare? Do you know what that is? Is that when they mail your medicine to you? No, so telemedicine is like tele, it's like TV. So you have a doctor's appointment. You're not gonna, you can't make it to the doctor. That you have, your appointment is with the doctor on your computer screen or on your tablet or whatever people call it, the tablet or computer screen. So you have your doctor's appointment. It's like you're in his office, 
right? He talks you. Now, it's not if you have an appointment where you have a wound that needs to be cleaned up. You can't do that on the computer. <laughs> but if you have like a, a general update, if you have something you need to do with, you need your prescriptions refilled, but they can't just do it. You have to see them again to do it, right? So telehealth, telemedicine, and telehealth. It's more telehealth. Is the, I should change that to telehealth. <laughs> because I talk about a lot of things through communications over the computer now. You talk to the doctor, they ask you how it is. There's actually, and I'm not going to, I'm just going to mention it because I'm not well versed in it. But there's like these things you can put on and, and, and like say heart rates and everything else and the computer is, and then it transports all that information, it's, you know, encrypted to the doctor's office. Nuts. There's a lot going on right now. But I'm not well versed in it. So I just learned about all of that in January. But I will be well versed by, um, I have to be by September. <laughs> so, so healthcare is important. Know about it. If you want to age in place and you want to stay at home, we need to understand all our options for health. If something happens, understand it. There are companies out there, instead of you like, I don't know what to do, you can easily come to the center here, the senior center, and there are so many people that will be willing to help you. But the one thing about us as we get older, and I'm not saying it's men, it's women. Women are more sensitive to it. But as we get older, we try to retreat, and we don't really voice how we feel. Like we're aching or hurting or something, especially with our own health. Why? I'll tell you why I don't do it. I don't want to do it most of the time because I don't want people to look at me and say, you know, she's, she's not full force or she's got something wrong or mm, I don't want to hang out with her. All she does is talk about what's wrong all the time, right? We do not express how we feel to other people. We keep it to ourselves for the most part. So when we're home, or within our spouse, but we're home trying to figure out what to do, how do we even know where to throw the dart or where to start? Right? There's, um, there's uh, Resource for Seniors. You know that group, Resource for Seniors? Resource for Seniors is here in Raleigh, and it's part of Wick County. Full, full of information. The Senior Center, full of information. There's always people here that will help you figure out how to age in place, how to stay at home comfortable. Okay? So I'm going through my legs here. Well, that doesn't sound right. The legs are the table. <laughs> so here we go with proper house design. This happens to be my really, my deep uh, wheelhouse. Because I design all this stuff. And, um, and well, there's some good news on this, but we'll talk about that another time. So, so the idea of the home done, like people, I'm not having my whole home remodeled. I'm not, I don't have that kind of money. Ah. So the truth of the matter is, if you want to stay at home, a home can be so much bigger than you need. 4,000, 3,000, and you're one or two people. First of all, think of it. Do you use all that space? No, I don't, but I'm not moving. OK, good enough for me. Now, if you want to stay, what you've got to think about in the areas of the house that you spend most of your time, you realize maybe you go in the kitchen and you go over to the sunroom or the screen porch to have coffee. And all the areas you spend most of your time, would you say it's upstairs or downstairs? Downstairs, right? True, because upstairs is what's usually up in bedrooms. That's why I like having a bedroom on the first floor. I'm that lazy. I don't even want to walk in. <laughs> So we need home designs, and if you have everything on the first floor, okay, so, so let's look at where you're living, where you're living on the first floor. So is it easy for you to maneuver in the kitchen? Is it easy for you to get the dishes or to do here or do, or do you find yourself like on your tiptoes or get in a chair to go read something? You've got to be careful now. If you have to use something in order for your physical body to be able to do something, like use a step stool or a chair to get up. That's, that's not safe. So that, that design, that's, that's one design, right? Or say you have an area you'd like to go to. I don't know, you have a deck that goes down to the backyard and you like walking all those steps, right? Like, and the steps are up. And they're not really have been taken care of a while and you, you find yourself, sometimes you're like, I'm gonna go out there, but I'm not doing my steps today. You find yourself avoiding to do things Whatever that may be, steps or anything else, avoiding to do it because you're thinking about what it takes to do it, and uh, not today, I'm not in the mood. 
And little by little, you don't realize, month after month, into years, whatever, what you used to do, where you used to go in your own house, that you used to love, you don't do anymore. So if you can think about how you alter, if you really sit back and think about it, you're like, wow, I used to do, I don't really do, I didn't even thought, you don't really think about what you used to do. So living in your house, having a home design, it's called universal design, is one of the topics I speak about frequently. Universal design is applied into aging in place. And simple me, universal design was started in NC State here in North Carolina. And a gentleman called Ronald Mace, he was an engineer. And Ronald Mace had a version of polio. Now I know polio, he, he's passed, he, I think in the 80s, but he had a version of polio. But what he had, you know those crutches that have like, um, they have like clamps here, they're called forearm crutches, and you kind of like got to walk like this? Well, that was him. And he, he had a version, and it, it impeded on it. But he was an architectural engineer, okay? He was always into the design. Him and his wife said, he said, let's go buy a house. Every house he walked in, every house, did you not think it was a problem with something because of his condition? The steps. And then he was on the wheelchair. He couldn't get through the door with his chair. Or he couldn't walk. He had to walk it. And then he did too many steps. Or everything was just too high, too low. So it got to the point. He says, you know what? The houses are made for able-bodied people. Houses are built for able-bodied people. So he took it upon himself to say, you know what? If you're going to make a doorway, think it wider than 30 inches. If you're going to make a bathroom, make it at least wide enough where a wheelchair can turn around. Instead of it's having a commode, a shower, you're in, you're out, you dry your hair, <laughs> you, know, you know, those little things. At least you have to have design where it's not just for able body, or it's not just, it doesn't have to be that say, oh, handicap accessible. Handy, it's not a handicap. Universal design is designs that work for everyone, regardless. So that's what universal design is. NC State, he went to NC State, they had a whole aging in place universal design department, had a lot of money, but in my true heart, it, can't, it was too much ahead of its time. Because it's only catching up now, right? Now, well, I'll say 2024, I'll say 2018, 2019, they really started talking about universal design, but this is going bad. So no one really supported the department and the kind of whatever. The unit universal design, I am out there talking to builders every day. Every time I'm out there talking about we need to create designs that works for everybody. From the moment you're born to the last breath you take, whether you're four feet tall or seven feet tall. You, no one should ask anybody else for help because we can do it on our own. Regardless of it, they're like, what? But now they understand where I'm coming from because so I design that way. They're like, oh, okay, you know? So it's possible, but no one talks to you about what it all means to stay home and age in place. It's more than just having a home design. So smart home technology, anybody have smart home devices in their house? So smart home technology, it's, it's usually like the, the, the younger generations, I don't even have it, I hate to say it, but um, smart technology, they have something that from a remote, you can turn your air conditioning on and off, you can turn your lights on and off. You, smart technology is something just as simple as that, and it goes way up to putting shades down and up in the house. You can control everything in your house. <laughs> Alexa. 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 Alexa can do all that. You can say Alexa, can Google, Google, Google uh, lights on. on. That's all smart. That's smart. You can jump. <laughs> so that's all smart. Sometimes I don't feel very smart because I don't know about it. But she drives me nuts. So does she? Yeah. She gave me right in the... Alexa? Yeah. Yeah. What does she tell you? Take the garbage out. Take the garbage out. Imagine? Okay. Did you hear that in the video? He said. Because Alexa's always telling them to take the garbage out. And you said that up, didn't you? <laughs> take the garbage out. No, but that's what happens in a lot of technology that for medicine reminders, reminders to do events around the house, to turn the lights on, up. At a certain time, the air conditioner comes on. If it's too hot, the, the heat comes on. It is, it is everything. Even, I went, I went away for a week and a half, not too long ago, and I forgot to turn the air conditioning, I had it on 72, and I wanted it to like 76, you know, not there. Yeah. On my phone, I went on the app, whoop, I have a Nest thermostat, you heard of Nest? And that was like, whoop. So instead of leaving the air running for the whole time, I'm not there. So that's the call of smart term, is that technology can help you function in your home and do things for you in your home. Or remind you to take the garbage out in your home. <laughs> <laughs> then adaptive innovations, energy efficiency. So the whole thing about proper home design also, energy efficiency. You want to 
What are we doing in the house? Are we using the entire house? Like we said, we went downstairs. If you're in a big house, and you're not loop, loop. You're not living up there. I stuttered once in a while, sorry. If you're in a big house and you're not living up there, can we get another thermostat? Does it, does it, do you have a separate thermostat? Then be mindful of that thermostat up there if you're never up there. If you don't have a thermostat up there, we start thinking, oh, I'm paying for all this heat, and I'm paying for all this stuff. But usually the houses here in North Carolina have two separate thermostats going if you have the house that's big to control all that, right? So be mindful of the expenses that way. Community integration. So do you like living in a house where you have neighbors? Oh, I don't forget that question. All right. How many people live in a house right now that they do not have like an immediate neighbor, like a close neighbor, like you kind of you all know this piece of land. Anybody here? So everybody here has neighbors? Is a neighbor you can walk to or a neighbor you can drive to? Walk to. Walk to? Walk to? Okay. So that's the whole thing about community integration, which is really important. So I would say, all right, I want to stay, I want to age in place, rah, rah. I live by myself. I have the health care. I'm going to have some, some designs changed in my house, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We have all this. But here I am, like the Wizard of Oz. You know, Dorothy in the house and the house lands. Some, you see some houses. And they're on total empty farmland. And this is their house. So, yeah, they can age in place, but they have health care, they have transportation, they have all these other things we're talking about. But they kind of isolated themselves, like community isolation. So, you've got to think about that too. So, that's not anybody here, so we're good to move on. Okay. Financial considerations. Now, this is one of the legs of the table. So, financial, I'm going to see time. Financial considerations, it's not about how much money you have in the bank. It's not about what your 401 is or retirement. It has nothing to do with that. If you have that, God bless. But it's understanding that we budget for retirement, but it's not that like you have to have these millions. You have enough to live your life. And at this point in your life, you know what you need. Or you've been doing it for however long already, so you're comfortable with that. But there are some people that are in their 50s that I talk to, maybe just scooting up on 60, and they're like, hmm, I think I need to change things a little bit. Because they don't think about that. Seriously, there are people that don't even think about that yet. So, not in this group today. Understanding the healthcare costs. People feel, I get Medicare, I get free insurance. Is that true? No. Right? We pay for Medicare per month. At one point, it wasn't that way, but it became that way. Right? So, we have to understand the healthcare costs. And you're secondary, right? You have to pay for that too. So Medicare only pays 80%, who's paying the 20%? And there's the medication. Blah, blah, blah. You have to understand all of that. Because when you start getting bills and you're not really thinking about your budgeting for the money, you start getting billed because of this. What starts happening? Chaos. We don't do it. Everything's a mess. We don't have a care manager coming in to help us. So we sit like this and we go, uh, and we do nothing. Right? We don't go to the doctors, we don't go to transportation, we don't know if people can come and help us, we don't that's it happens like that. It happens like that. The state planning and legal affairs. So aging in place and staying at home is fine. But get everything in order. I had a talk recently with someone that's a financial advisor. And I was at his business and we were talking. And he was talking about wills and estate planning. Estate planning doesn't mean you're planning your death. It's just like, you know, just get your legal affairs in order. And a lot of people don't think about that. Well, I don't have any kids, and let the state take everything. That's what someone just told me recently. But there's other things about getting your legal affairs in order. So uh, there's a lot to it, what you house and your assets and what you want to do. Just, just, just be mindful of it because it'll make you feel better. Because if something ever does happen to you and you're, say, in the hospital and you didn't do that, trust me, that's the first thing you think of. That's the first thing you think of. Oh. And then sometimes you can't do things at a certain pace because they're going to say, oh, you're under the rest, and it's really not legal, and all this other mess. And then people you want to help and you want to take care of and you want to share after your passing, can't be done. There's a, there's a possibility of that happening, so just be mindful. And scam prevention. Ooh, doesn't oh, <laughs> tell you enough about scam prevention? Every time we turn around, it's something else. How many people get their phones Calling, that's what happened before when I was talking to you, my phone was going on. From numbers you know nothing about. Companies, this is potential spam. Everybody wants to tell you your car warranty ran out. 
Someone wants to sell you some trip or some share to some condominium somewhere. How many people get that on their phones constantly, right? So they get a number. They say, well, if you call them, do not call this. Do you guys know about that? The government has a number. Mm -hmm. And then you put in your phone number. And then they create this do not call list. So if someone calls you when you're on that list, you can go back to the site and put that number that called you, and they track them and they kind of get them out. It, it was a great idea when it first came out years ago. Now I just think it's inundated with the entire world. When you get, I get a call here with a 919 number on it. I used, when I was in, as educated as I am today, I used to pick up like a 919, someone from Raleigh, maybe it's someone I met, maybe it's someone from a top. What do I know? Then there's someone from the Philippines talking to me on the phone. I'm like, so what they do is they buy numbers that are in North Carolina that you recognize. And then, so anyway, that scam. And that's why so many people I feel bad because I had one of the senior, I was a senior move management company and I was director of vice president of operations. And we would move people from the house, pack them here in North Carolina, bring them to a community, unpack them, set them up, whatever. And the one thing I heard over and over and over again is, do you know how to stop my phone from ringing? And I can see how it just grates. I was in this one, it was one after the other. And I was in at least six hours that day, over and over and over. I said, you can turn the ringer off. I mean, I'm just, you know. But what if it's somebody I need to talk to? OK, so I don't know. But you see what happens, right? And I get it. But scam prevention. It's, it's hot and heavy these days for everybody. So just be mindful that if you want to stay home, they're going to have your address, they're going to know where you are, and it's, it's going to be, um, yeah. Nope, move on. Community emotional considerations. This, my friend, is very, very important. Remember I said if you had a house in the middle of nowhere, there's no one around, you can have everything you want, you can have four legs at the table, but you don't have the fifth leg, which is community. Isolation, loneliness, this is what this is about, okay? So social engagement, support some networks, age-friendly communities, access to info and resources. I was just telling you about resources for seniors, or you come here, you get everything. Any question you have, this is what you need to know. You need to be brave enough to say, I need to ask this question to somebody, and you come to a place like this and you ask, or resource for seniors, you call them up and you ask. There's so many people that are out there to help you, but until you ask, no one's going to know you. You have a need. Intergenerational programs. But anyway, community is all about here. Why do we come here? You come here for classes, but it's not just because you want to be educated on knitting and every other class there is here. There's a lot of beautiful classes here. But we like to be around people when we do it. Do you like being here today? Sure. Okay, thank you. Because it's because of me, right? No. <laughs> Take the garbage out. No. <laughs> Anyway, but we need interaction, we need humor, we need connection. I know if I didn't have it, I wouldn't be the same person I am today. And I know that. I make it a point to go out. I do this. What I do in the communities at Chapel Hill and Durham and here, I do it as my give to the community. You have to understand that there are so many things out there to help you be the person you want to be, live the life you want to live, in the housing or community you choose to be living in. There's so much help, but you don't know about it. Nobody teaches this. Nobody talks about it. Even if you want to move out of your house and you want to downsize, what's the first thing you think? I can't. I have boxes from 1972 I haven't opened. I can't go through this mess. I'm done. I'm done. Sounds familiar? I saw that. Yeah. I guilty. <laughs> but then we think about not moving the way we'd love to downsize. Maybe to a community. Maybe just to a small ranch home in a 55 plus community. Whatever. But we stop thinking, oh, I have Christmas lights since 1962 with Mickey Mouse ears on it. I don't want to. Oh, the horror. Oh, no, I know. I'm on your life right now. Like, like I've been there, right? Okay. I'm in your ass. When we move, it comes with us. Yeah, I never even know. It, right? the, the tape is so old, it's yellow and cracked. And you still, you're still open, right? Oh, my God. So, anyway, so, so there's a company. So, Love of the Goody has nothing to do with this, but I'm going off of this, right? So, there are people that want to move, and I'm going to help you with something really important. There are people that want to move. And as we age, we have no patience. Sorry, we have a lot of memories. And memories are very uh, heavy. 
because it makes us, should I, shouldn't I, I don't know what happened, boxes, I don't know what's up there, when's the last time we swept or took the garbage out up there, I don't know. So what we do is then we, we create all these blurs, right? And then you start going like this, like, oh. and then we avoid, we escape that thought of thinking about moving or how, how do we even start? I've been in this house for 30, how do I? There's a comp there are companies called senior move managers, okay? Senior move managers, they're basically move managers. They help you with, they manage your move. But there's certain ones that are geared at work with everyone, but specialize in seniors. Because we're different, right? We don't want to be rushed around like a 30 year old that wants to move with a kid, pack all that stuff, tape it up, let's get out of here. Know? If you're 30 and you're just trying to get out of your house, let's, you know, then you put it in the attic, and then 30 years later, you're like, I don't want to go to my attic, right? <laughs> so, but as we're older, we're like, how do we part? So senior move managers come into your house, and again, I'm telling you this because I was the vice president of operations and went here in North Carolina for a year and a half because I wanted to learn the business. I didn't know it. And this helps you. Go into your house, you want to move, you, you agree to everything, okay, fine. So what they do is they take a picture your bedroom as it is, your living room as it is, your kitchen as it is, everything. Where this picture is, where this teacup is. And in every room, go to your bedroom. Do you want this? Yes or no. Do you want to move with it? Yes or no. No. Okay, it goes in the box, and that box either goes to auction, or they throw it out. Whatever you want to do, they auction everything for you. And everything you do want gets wrapped up, tagged in the box, but bedroom, bedroom, or kitchen, or kitchen. They move you, they hire the movers, they go in. They're there with the movers, you're out partying all day. They'll unpack every single box and every single thing that you have in your house is placed exactly where it was, your bedroom. It's like you walk in your bedroom, it's like, I live here. Like everything's familiar, the kitchen. The... So the, these people at this scale are there out to help you. How many people have really realized that this even exists? And it's not that expensive. It's like, so if they're having the burden of trying to move and the first thing you're thinking of is, I can't because Probably can't, it's overwhelming. So just know there's businesses out there that can help you. Okay, so they're called senior group managers. Just in case you decide to move, I'm just saying. So, <laughs> not that I'm pushing you. Okay, here's my, here's a good one. So, what's your name again? Carol. Carol, please. have cabinets in your kitchen let's just look at cabinets in the kitchen okay so if you were to reach the cabinet right now how up how high up do you need to reach the cabinet? here's a counter the cabinets are right here I can reach the handles they're on the bottom the bottom so you have them down low yeah oh good no here. no I can reach they're up there but the, the handles to open them are okay okay so you open it now how far up do your shelves go uh, not all the way to the ceiling, but uh, of course I can only get to the second level. And there you go. There's one more level that uh, there you I go. have to get a stool to get to. There you go. See? I never spoke to her about this before. I'm just telling the video people. <laughs> this is common. This is what I'm saying. That she just said, I can't reach. If I do, I need to get a stool. But the, uh, on the second level, I can only reach it if it's right out on the edge. Right, and if it's not on the edge. Oh, that's stuff back there I never use. Right. When's the last time? 1974? <laughs> <laughs> I bought that house and moved in in 2014. Oh, okay, okay. So I'll leave it 10 years, right? Well, that's good. Good for you. 10 years. But thank you. You, you proved my point for me. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't realize you were so tall. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, am. <yeah. laughs> How did you ever find pants to go all the way down? Um, uh, 36 one. I have a size 13 shoe. So there you go, right? How do I find anything? It's not easy. But here I am. Big personality type, right? So you see what, what Carol just said, right? So 
When I talk about it, when I talk to builders about it, and communities about it, and even the senior management companies right now, I just started talking with the independent living, assisted livings, even when you get an apartment there, you go in, there's a microwave above, right? Mm -hmm. And then above that is cabinets, and because that's just what it is. That's how it's always been, and it probably always will, until someone stops this circle, mm -hmm. right? That's right. I'm a one-woman army. I'm a bad one. <laughs> I am. I actually have something called the ageless home, and that's what I'm doing. And we're actually going to build this and start. But height matters. So forget about age. Forget about ability. I don't like the word disability. We all have abilities, but it different levels, right? So forget age. Forget abilities. Forget all of that. If we design home designs, products, so, uh, provide services that keep height alone in mind. Hide alone that she never asks him for help and he never. Imagine him going in the dishwasher. Just saying. So she doesn't need to ask him help. If both of them can function in the same kitchen of being Carol without asking anyone for help and we, we can get everything, wouldn't that be wonderful if the idea of that is throughout the home? Right? So we don't have to think about, everybody's talking about, oh, aging in place or disabilities or wheelchairs and everything else because we're having open space and wider doorways and wider hallways by natural because people like space and because it's that way because it's just people like space wheelchairs will happen to fit right so it's not saying i'm doing this for that anybody see where i put the remote oh yeah here you are so so height matters now i'm going to show you some pictures i edited these last night so I was a little tired. I was doing about one in the morning. <laughs> so I'm going to show you pictures of features that I help people do in their houses so they can stay. It's not going to tell them promoting myself. I'm letting you know this can be done. So this is called a stepless entry, right? It speaks for itself. In the front of your house, there's no steps. I have done, and I have worked with, I read all these reports and everything, but let's just say, someone has four steps going into the house, or five steps, and that is the only way into the house, or through the garage, there's four or five steps. Or if people come, they park the car and go in front of the house and got the steps, right? I, I'm 30, 40, I'm going to do steps, like, but what are, how safe are steps for a child that run out of the house and want to go play, and how, how many of them, well, if I even give you statistics of how many children end up in the hospital from falling down steps, front, back, garage, all the it's through the roof, but no one talks about it. So if you want to have steps, you have the rail, you can take steps out, and this is how you get a step of century. This particular one didn't have steps, but just want to kind of think another picture I can show you. You take four or five steps out, so say the steps go up to here, right? So you start here, and you walk up your steps. And you're up here, is where you go into the house, okay? So now you're here and you're going to the house, so you didn't see on the video. So you start your steps, and then here you go in the house. What you want to do, if you took all those bricks away, let's just say the brick steps, right? You have a, so how do you get from here to here? What they do is they come in and they put dirt. They put dirt down. This is only if you have enough room in front of your house. If your house is right in front of a sidewalk, I can't do this, right? But if you have, a lot of homes do, they have enough room where they put the dirt. And what they do is they make like a sidewalk path. They compact the dirt. So what they're doing is creating this going up a, a little bit of an incline into the front of your house. You take the steps out, you create your own stepless entry. And people, oh, it's expensive. But no, it's not. You don't know until you have someone coming. Now, if you have 15 steps and you want to create this whole, no. But the point is, you can have steps removed and create your own stepless entry. Now, let's go, now I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to talk to you about Conversions in bathrooms. Now, I know that some of these pictures are grandioso, and I'm not sitting here telling you. My point isn't to show you grandioso things. I'm, I'm being very, I'm trying to find very dramatic pictures. This particular bathroom is in a new home build from like five years ago. So the customer, the client had asked for a place to sit, a big enough room. Why? Because the husband was in a wheelchair, right? And then they had a shower, you know, this week and take. He can take himself in the shower and sit down. And then there's a shower up here that comes down. But the idea is big. And the other part of the idea, it's a zero entry shower. So from the floor right into the bathroom, there's no lip. It just goes straight across. And people say, oh, that water's going to come on the bathroom floor. 
No. Back here, the strip, that's called a French drain. So when the water comes down, it has the slightest pit. It has the sl you don't even know it. And the water just hits and drains immediately in the back. It never comes forward. So if you want to walk in shower, or you want to create, to age in place, we need to remove barriers. The number one barrier is in the kitchen, right? The number one barrier is the kitchen. So how do we make that? Number two is the bathroom. So one of the things that happened is the shower. And this is what I'm telling. So people say, oh, I got a tub. I don't have a shower. I got one that's this way. When you remodel a house or you want one or two things changed in your house, I always suggest that you have at least one shower that's a stepless shower. You can have other showers in the house. But one shower that's a walk-in. Sometimes I have a little bit like this. But the idea is that you don't have to do this over a tub. Here's the dramatic, right? Now you get it up. The numbers of falls that happen from that move alone are astronomical. Those are Medicare statistics. They are crazy because we try, we hold on the sink, we got to hold it, and then the sink starts coming off the wall. We don't realize the grab's pulling, and one day you go to push on it, the whole sink comes falling. I've been there, did it, and done it with so many people because of that happening repetitively. So this is a better idea of what I mean by zero entry. You see? So again, grandioso shower, but I'm trying to give you an idea how there's no lip to zero entry. And again, the, the draining is on that side. Uh -huh. So that's a pretty big bath. Those are big bathrooms. Yeah. I just wanted to say that my mom was in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and there was a bathroom right next to the kitchen, just a toilet and a sink. And so they added a, um, what do you call this? A zero entry a shower. A zero entry shower, uh, door, or whatever. Shower, mm -hmm. big enough for the wheelchair, and she had one of those. And it worked perfectly. Yeah. It was the best thing ever. There you go, right? They couldn't do it in the other bathrooms because they had bathtubs, but that one little bathroom, they adapted it and it worked great. So, there also, the other part of remodeling is that bathtubs can come out. A typical bathtub in a shower comes out, and they build a shower system in it, anywhere between five and seven thousand dollars. Now, I'm talking about the showers that, you know, like the plastic, that roll, it's not. If you want tiles and all that, well, you can get as expensive as you want. But to pull a tub system out, it could be cast. It could be any a, a cast iron, it could be porcelain. It doesn't matter what the tub is made of. They'll take it out and put it in the shower. But that's just the idea. It's important. If you want to age in place, the kitchen and the bathroom are the two most obvious places where people fall in accidents all the time. And then you need the health care, then you need the financial the health care, then you need transportation to go to the doctor's support. Those are the five legs coming into play. Right now. Okay, this is a fun one. Hang on. So, <laughs> one of the things, I talk to people and I write, and people write me on the newsletter and stuff, and they ask me questions. And this is something I talk about all the time, and I don't, I'm not embarrassed. I mean, okay, so the smallest seat in America, they say, anybody guess what the smallest seat in America is? The toilet. The toilet. It's the small, do you know that the standard toilet, which the, Amer which, which the housing on coding allows that a toilet can be only as high as 14 inches off the floor. 14 standard toilets. You know what 14 inches for me? <laughs> right here. That's 14 inches, right below many pack. Okay? So that's a standard, that's where the porcelain, then you have the little lid on top, which is what? A third of an inch, I don't know. But I would say to myself, oh my God, it's such a journey down and go, I mean, as I got older, I, I never really thought anything of it until I had my knee issues. And then I'm like, help, <laughs> you know? And like, oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. So then I was like, okay, help. But the point is, why do we have, again, remember the tall and short? Remember me and Carol? Okay. Would it work for her being okay? Yeah. Does it work for someone like me? Not as I'm aging. When I'm younger, I didn't care. I used to, I used to be a runner. I used to jump up. Now I'm like, I sit and I'm like, shoot. And I look for my escape route. Because I don't know anyone. Hold on this. That could come out of the wall. There's no, I have to think. I'm like, okay, this is wrong. So what I started to do is write years ago about why. Why are certain things still code the American housing? It's the American housing. Why the code? How small are these people when they made the code and all this stuff, right? It comes to be, and all of a sudden ADA came into effect. 
1975. I read the ADA, American Disabilities Act. Mm -hmm. ADA. So a lot of times they say, oh, you have to have ADA. What that ADA came out for was commercial. If you're in a commercial store, commercial building, you have to have an ADA bathroom, meaning, like they have here, this is a commercial. There's one big stall that a wheelchair can be gone into, right? And, there's, and there's the, the toilet is actually up higher. Because when you make a lateral move from a transfer over, it has to be at least 18 inches. Because the rest are going to slide down to 14 inches, right? You can't have that. So ADA is American Disability Act. So it's a commercial property. They have that ramp. They have steps. They also have ramps going up. Whatever, OK? So everybody says, oh, we need to make ADA bathrooms in residential houses. So I was like, well, you can just say we need taller commodes. Taller, we don't have to say ADA. But so Kohler and a lot of brand names, you know, Delta Kohler, they make their own toilets. And they said a few years ago, they came out with toilets now that are 17 or 19 inches high. And they call it the, the tall John, I think they call it. <laughs> so, so 17, 19 inches, I'm like, oh, right now we're talking. Why do they have to be $800? Y'all are raising it a few inches and you, you're doubling it more than your price? Isn't it? So then I, of course, went on my soapbox and pitched that for a while. But there's something else. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to find something else. If I want someone to raise their toilet four or five inches, this is, you're not buying an $800 toilet. So I found something called a toilet baker. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me show you my toilet paper. So here it is. This is a toilet paper. See down here in the circle? Right here is a little blurry. Right here is a plastic piece. Someone comes in, it's a former, and it's not that expensive. They just remove the toilet, and then there's a wax o ring. They take that o ring out, they put another wax, they put this plastic, and they put the commode on top of it. It raises you up by five inches. What does that cost? Mm, $105. Beats the heck out of uh, eight hundred something dollars for the toilet, doesn't it? Thank you very much. Okay, so other things, what you can do, what people do, is they buy a raised toilet seat, right? So if you, people say, oh, you want, you need, because if you have a hip flexion problem, if you have a hip surgery, or just, just as we age, it's like it's hard to get the, it's hard to get the total bend of sitting this way. We only can go so far, right? So we want to raise it. So you raise, but when you put something on top, even though it may have a lock on it or something and you sit on it and you plop your weight down, that moves. And then it moves again, and it moves again, guess what? So instead of thinking about what everybody tells us to put it on top, a toilet elevator, I think it's short for toilet elevator. I'm really not sure, but I love the name. Toilet elevator. Mama is elevator. No, I'm kidding. So, so we have a race toilet seat, but that's something to keep you safe in the bathroom. So a walk-in shower, at least one shower in the house to be walking in and convert it from a tub into a shower. It's, it's easy for anybody to do. Now, say you have, this is a cutout tub. I, I probably didn't hear about this. So say you have a tub in the shower. You only have a one bathroom. I'm not giving up my tub. I'm not, but I, I can't really get into anything anymore because I have to walk over. I have to walk over it, right? Once you lift your leg to walk into it, just getting on one leg, good luck. That's when all this can happen, right? But it's called a tub cutout. They'll come in, this company will come in, cut a U-shape. It could be cast iron, porcelain, doesn't matter what the tub is made of. Cut a U-shape, and they fit it with this plastic out rim. And this is a door. You can buy it with the door, so you can, someone, someone in your family wants to take baths, or you can take the door, buy it with the door, and the door comes off. So if someone needs to get in the shower, but they can't do this, they just now have only this much to walk in. Only this much to walk over. So this door comes out, they cut a tub, tub cut out, and you can walk in and out. I have people that buy it without the door. They just have a parent that lives with them that can't, so they just kind of step over it and they can get in and be, still be independent, but not have to worry about all of this. So then you have people like, I don't want my tub cut, but I, I need some help getting in the tub. Anybody ever hear a tub bar? Again, these pictures are a little blurry, I'm sorry. This is what a tub bar is. It costs 20 something, $30. So as you get in, it's something you hold on. If you want to hold on it and then help yourself in and get in, there's always assistance. It's like, my, my point to all of this is be safe in the bathroom, be safe in the kitchen. If you want to age in place, those are the two biggest areas where people fall because we're not tall enough to do this or we're not steady enough to do this. Here's something called a super pole. <laughs> Some people call it the stripper pole, but I don't know. So they have this thing, it's called super pole. Again, sorry for the blurry picture. 
But if you want to hold it to go in and out of the tub, if you want to hold this part of it to sit up and down in the commode, you can. So it has different things coming out. It, it adheres to the floor, it adheres to the ceiling, and it's solid. So it's a pull for different variations of different things to do. Can you see these pictures good, Carol? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I went, I went, oh my god, that's hysterical. I should have looked at the picture. So you know how people tell you you need a grab bar? You know how grab bars is those metal things in the wall? And like, oh, you, know, you should put a bar in the wall. I was building a house for somebody and said, you put a bar in the wall, you need to put a bar in the wall. And then I saw this. It says, my doctor told me that I'm getting older. I need to install a bar in my shower. What do y'all think? <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that great? <laughs> you want me to install a bar? I got it. This is it. Because <laughs> we're in denial. I don't want to install a denial. I'm sorry. So, now I'm going to come to kitchens. One of the things I tell you, I'm running over, aren't I? Oh my god, I am so... See, I can get into talking. This is over an hour. You guys still okay? You okay? okay. So I'm talking about kitchens. The one thing I do in my kitchens I build, I have no upper cabinets. Zero. So you don't need to do all this, you know, try to get the microwave. What I do is I put it in natural windows. Natural light, it's the ecology of light. It makes you feel so good. So kitchens like this are not unusual around the world. They're just unusual here in the US. Right? So natural light, just think about it. Anyway, I'm just showing the idea. So if you take it out of God, what are you going to put there? Uh, windows. If it's an exterior wall going outside. If it's an interior wall, I put decorations or whatever. This is where everything goes. They're called base cabinets. So everywhere around the kitchen, you pull out, put your pots. This is a sit-in base cabinet. Then there's ones you open up and there's slats and you put all your dishes like this. There's another one put all the cups in. There's one. See, just like this. This is where everything is. So now, if a five year old walks in the kitchen, remember, plates, glasses, pots, everything is down here in these drawers. If a five year old walks in, what do you think they're going to say? Mommy can have a glass? Well, they're just going to go pull the drawer open and get a glass. If someone comes in with a wheelchair and says, Excuse me, can you get me a plate or a glass of me? What are they going to do? Creating independence, regardless of ability, or age, or height, is huge. And one of the biggest things we have is the kitchen. Is the kitchen. So stop looking at the way things work. There are countries and people all over that build homes now like this, and then they pull out drawers with the plates and everything else. Is it expensive? Honestly, no, because if you're, say you're building a new house, and then that, that bill that you get includes all the upper cabinets, all the low. That's expensive. We don't even want upper cabinets anymore. We just take the lower ones. And look at it differently. Oh, going back to the bar again. So you have the pots that way. No, see? You see? So making it available for anyone at any height, any age, any ability, any anything, we need to stop thinking that way in housing. That's our explorer, it's not your eyes. So here, this is a kitchen island, right? A kitchen sink, and they raised it up here at the height, but this is the dishwasher. The dishwasher is up a nine and a half to 10 inches on this side. Why? Someone like me doesn't have to do a headstand every time I open the dishwasher and I need to get in the back. But someone like Carol can just open it and just right here. So why aren't we raising appliances? Why aren't we raising things so I don't have to bend and she doesn't have to get up? We don't think about it here in the US, we don't. Here's something else, doing islands, and you pull out, it's an extension table in it. Just give me an idea, I'm giving you an idea for why. What if a, your grandkid comes by, I want to help you cook. It's short enough for them, right? But what if you have someone in a wheelchair that wants to come over? Right, there's different things we can start doing and putting in through home design, just thinking about the tall and the short. Look, although, instead of having them in the closet and everything else, there's onions and potatoes and leeks and... I love to cook, so of course I put this one in. All my spices, right? <laughs> but, okay, anybody heard of a pull-down closet? Again, going back to, I'm going to the bedroom now. One of, one of the worst things, I'm gonna use it again, Carol, I'm sorry, but, one of the first things, when, you're, when, you're, when you go into any house, I don't care what it is, they have the racks here, and they have the racks here for your clothes, right? How do you, how do you get up there? How do you, I can't even get up there at the time, right? So, so we don't use it. It's wasted space. And all that space from there to the ceiling, just waste it. 
So what they have is closed racks. So again, pulling, I know just, I put this in because the stories I have people, they get a chair, you know, I'm getting my winter clothes and whatever they want to get. But they have these racks that they're on a hinge right here, so they're either manual or motorized. If they're manual, there's a string in the middle, you put the string down, and your clothes come down like this, and they come to eye level. And you take what you want, and then put it up. There's also electric, you hit a button, and all your clothes come down. You want to come up. Why are we reaching and standing and getting because they build houses that way? There are products and services that can help you get through that. Aging in place is like making things fit. That's interesting. Oh, aging in place is making you realize that you can stay at home. You just need to know from my experience and my understanding that it's just not, oh, I have a good home design. I don't know. I got a raised toilet seat. I got the toilet vader. I'm good to go. There's a lot to consider here. Financially, you may already have. Healthcare, don't worry about it. You know, everything, you may not. But the whole thing here is that we have, when we make a decision, like with your boxes in the end, doesn't this look familiar? Oh, like, oh, oh. Or do I want to stay? I want to go. Oh, because when we don't have a plan, we don't have a plan because we don't have a knowing. We don't have a knowing because no one educated us. And no one's educating you because no one finds it important to educate you, but I do. And this is, this is, I'm very passionate about it. I'm really serious here. I'm very passionate about it because until once you have knowledge, you didn't know how to make a particular cake. I told you the recipe. I told you how to do it. I said, take your time. So that you did it for the first time and it came out great. You're like, God, you can do this. But you didn't know anything about it until someone told you how it sat and showed you, right? There is so much in the Asian population that are out there for services and products that I can go on from days. I'm already an hour and a half in because I can talk. <laughs> but I don't want this to happen. You know, I always say this, always seek knowledge because knowledge empowers you. So ask for support, ask for your questions. A-S-K, ask K-E-Y, ask for your key. Have a key and open up into the needs that you have. But in order for people to help you with the needs that you have, you need to speak and talk about it. You need to read, there are people, I'm telling you, the, the, uh, the old centers and everything else, resource for seniors, and the center here, the center where now, where you live. There's so many people that are out there to help. There's so many communities. You just go online on the internet and find out. Educate to create a voice for choice. Now that's a slogan I'm going to stop seeing around here probably by next year. That's me, if you ever see it. Because <laughs> I'll be putting videos out. I have a, a nonprofit and I have a channel. And I was supposed to do it at the beginning of this year, but by fall, I'll stop to put the videos on. I'll let y'all know. But it's videos like this and stuff I learned and other stuff I learned. So you can constantly just go online and you met me personally, so you can just reach out to me. Okay? Did y'all read this before? Aging seems to be the only way to get it. To get it. Only way to live life. Aging seems to be the only way to live life. But that's true. That we are going to age. We're living life where aging we're going through. You have to go through this. But just know, it's just not. Okay. And that's me. Hanging out. So, that's the end of it. So, the, did I kind of clear up a little bit what aging place really is? It's not just a saying. It's not just, oh yeah, I can do it. Someone says, oh, you know, take, take the doorknobs off and put levers on so you can push down. That, you'll have a good safe home. No. There's a lot more to it than that. You just gotta figure what part of the house you really wanna stay in and what part of the house you spend most time in and then think about how can I make this easier? How can I not do this? How can I not? Right? Well, how can I stop? Because we can do it now. And then we drag the other foot. This is what happened to me. I'll tell you a true story. I got in, I'm not thinking, I'm like, oh, I think I'm on this house, right? Get it, and I pull, like I want to drag this leg with the tip of this foot, didn't make the top. So I hit, I went really fast, and the, this whole foot, I went flying through everything she had in that shower, because I was flailing, I'm pretty big, so everything, I hit everything on the way down. That, that hurt, that hurt for a long, long time. Only because, hey, I can do this better. Boom, you don't know. Be prepared, so like a boy scout or a girl scout. <laughs> so, I want you guys to reach out to me anytime. Does anybody here need my number or anything like that? I think you'll send me a repeat so you have my card from the last time. <laughs> you have your card? You did? I think I only have like three left. It's like kind of ransacked me before I came in here. Anybody else need a card? What's the last thing I'll call? 
Excuse me? Was it your last session or how much you asked? Well, I missed the first session. Okay, the first it session. Take the whole hour. No, no, no. The first session was introductory. So it's called, should I stay or should I go? I say in the okay. class. So the first class is me talking a little bit about each. Okay. Now, this is all about should I stay. This is all about aging in place. This is all about knowing what you can do, what you shouldn't keep out. Next month, I'm going to be talking about communities. I have a specialist with me, and she knows about independent oh, living, assisted living, CCRCs, what it's like, where you go, all that. All the questions people want to ask. Okay? okay. All right. Anybody have any other questions for me? Do you know the date for that or already? Or um, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you as soon as you shut this up. But thank you very much. I hope you all learned something. See you soon.